and then Quadratus Lamborum. This picture in here is a little bit, shows a little bit more where it talks about three different layers of it. But let's just go over what's, what's in the notes. So the basic information you want to know is that it comes off the iliac crest in the thoracolumbar fascia down here. And then it goes to the TPs of L1, 2, 3, and then the 12th rib up here. Okay. And then what it's going to do is both act together. It's going to extend the spine like that. If one side acts, it's going to go like that. Okay. But what this picture shows, and sometimes it's considered that there's three different parts of it. One that's going to go from these TPs here to the rib, and then another part that goes from the electric crest towards the TPs, and then other fibers that run more vertical that go from the electric crest to, to the ribs. Okay? But this is all you really need to know here, that it's coming off of the iliac crest and the lumbar fascia, and then it goes to the transverse process and the bottom of the rib. But to, to, for more detailed, detailed information, there's three different parts. Some fibers run this way, some run this way, and some run straight up and down. And that's kind of more going to be the, it's a little bit deeper than the rectus spinae. The rectus spinae muscles are more towards all the way to the back, and then the quadratus lumborum lies a little bit more anterior to those. Like if you're going into the abdominal cavity and right past the internal organs, that's where the quadratus lumborum is going to be. And then the rectus spinae is beyond that. So then here's going to show just to review. Here's the quadratus lumborum. So it comes off the leg crest and the thoracolumbar fascia. It's going to go to the 12th rib and then the transverse process in the lumbar spine. Okay, then as we start going more medial, you're going to have the iliopristalis here, and then you have longismus, and then you have spinalis, which runs from SP to SP. So in the notes, there's a, a thumb, and so you need to palpate the quadratus yeah. lumborum, yeah. but it's underneath a little bit more. Yeah. Where you palpate it is more to the lateral edge, because it extends out farther. So what you're doing oh. is you're palpating kind of the edge of this muscle. When you come in from the side here, that's going to be this edge right here. Okay. Okay. That's where it will... We'll, we should have time to go over the, some of the slides from the truck I book, and that's where it gets into that palpation stuff. But it, the erector spinae kind of, kind of has an edge right here, and because when you extend the muscles, you feel, because the, the erector spinae from the back like this, there's more of an edge like that. The muscle fibers run this way, and then you can kind of come in from the edge, and that's where you're going to get the quadratus lumborum. Because those are going to more kind of, you're going to feel those running at an angle more like this, whereas rectus spinae is going to be pretty much vertical. And then getting into more deeper, actually right related to the, deep against the spine, and there's some deeper rotator muscles. Okay, and so just understand these basic things. And you don't really get into so much on these. It's going to, we're going to focus more on those other muscles we mentioned, the rectus spinae, quadratus lumborum, um, splenius cervicus, and capitis. But just understand that there's smaller, shorter muscles that are going to go only from one, maybe between one or two vertebrae. And then one of them is called intertransversi. So what do you think that goes attached to? Inter meaning between, and transverse meaning transverse process. So those are going to go between the TPs. And then you're going to have rotators longus and brevis. So since we have two names, one's going to be longer, one's going to be shorter. And they're going to go from the TP towards the spinous process. So they're going to be in an angle like this. And then interspinalis, where do you think those go? 
to mean SPs. Okay? So two of them are, are pretty much straight vertical, either between the spines or between the TPs. And then you have the rotators. Those are going to be more of an angle between the TPs and the SPs. One, one may be going only one or two layers up, levels up, and the other will go longer, and that's the uh, longest. And I guess I'm not mentioning it in, in here, but just so that you know, if you ever hear, because a lot of times they do talk about it in low back pain and, and studies of muscle, low back muscles, there's a multifidi, which is another group muscle that's part of this group. I guess I don't think it's being mentioned in here. It's in the number? Okay. Because it's not on the slide. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to go from the lamina to the SP. So you know where the lamina is, remember? It's basically between this transverse process and the spinous process. Because if you have the, if you're looking straight down on the vertebra and the lumbar spine, let's see. So you have the pedicle like this, and then the transverse process comes out like this, and then the lamina is right here. And then this is the spinous process. So it's part of the neural arch. First you have the pedicle, then you have the lamina. Okay. When, if you ever heard people having like this low back surgery or something, they'll say they have a laminectomy. Okay. So they're cutting the hole through the lamina to get into the disc or the spinal cord area. Okay. So it's more of the back part. It's just right at the base of the spinous process. If you come in from the spinous process, it's between the spinous process and the articular process or the transverse process. Okay, so meaning that the, um, the rotator muscles, since they go from transverse process to spinous process, they're going to be here, and then the multifidi are going to be even, even deeper. Because they're only going to go from the lamina to the spinous process. That's basically all the muscles that have to do with the, the rectus spinae and the other back muscles, all the way from the iliac crest and the sacrum up to the occipital. Okay. So now we'll talk about muscles of respiration. Okay. So you have intercostal muscles. You have external intercostals and internal. So what they're going to do is expedite respiration. So external, of course, is going to be more superficial. And they're going to run in this direction like this, as if you're putting your hands in your pockets. So these are external intercostals that run this way, and then internal intercostals run this way. And then when we talk later about abdominal muscles, you're going to have external obliques, which are going to run the same way, and internal obliques. So there's kind of a continuation between, the, there's a difference, there's intercostal, which are the ones between the ribs, and then abdominals are below the ribs. But for right now, we're just talking about intercostals. So the external intercostals, are going to originate on the inferior border of the rib and then the superior border of the rib below. But they also, you know, want to remember they run in this direction here. So they run from the anterior, I mean, from the posterior inferior border of this, they run more, they go anteriorly as they go to the lower rib. So again, it's like this direction, like you're putting your hands in your pocket. So the fibers go between, both of these are going to go between the ribs. But the external intercostals move anteriorly as they go to the lower rib. 